sorry, uh, the, uh, the Obama effect, uh, as, as it has been, I think it does need to be mentioned in this context as well, because uh, not only is, is, uh, is it are more and more uh, federal U.S. websites being, uh, having a uh, Creative Commons bug on them, um, but, uh, and all the, the information being listed as Creative Commons, which is, as, you know, which is great, uh, but also uh, they're, they're starting to use uh, both Drupal and movable type. They're using Drupal for recovery.gov, and I'm not sure where they're using movable type, but, but there's a, an, an acceptance for open source and trying different open source platforms for, for their web use uh, and web strategies uh, within uh, Obama's administration. Mm. So that's very. You got a new young, what, 34 year old uh, CTO down there, right? That's uh, right. Guys in Washington? <laughs> Yeah, yeah, I would uh, I would like to explore that a little deeper, um, building on what Don was talking about in terms of uh, government involvement in open source uh, communities and foundations. Uh, so you talked about Drupal. Uh, yeah. I, d I just wanted to add one thing. It was spurred by Dave's comment about incumbency, and I think it's it's really important, which is the structure of an enterprise license agreement. So uh, government's not alone in this. Co commercial corporations do this, but the, the way this works, for those who haven't been through this pleasure, is you know, big monopoly software providers says you know the way to get a real good deal for us is to sign up for you know forty million dollars and everyone can use whatever it is Oracle, Microsoft, right? And there's no incremental charge. You just carry on using it, right? It's free. It's free, right? So to to the to the incremental project, right? Project manager wants a new license for a database or something, looks free to them, right? At the end of three, during the three year period, it's very hard for any uh, young, challenging company to come in because they're trying to compete with free, right? And they're going to go out of business if they compete with free on a commercial model. Then you get to the end of three years and the friendly software company comes in and says, well, let me count heads here, all right? Oh, it's not $40 million, you've got $80 million worth of software out there. Okay, well, we'll do a deal. For you, 60, right? So, but the, the, there's two effects of that. One is it makes the incremental decision look free, and it gives enormous leverage to the, uh, you know, big oligopolist, if you like, company, and it, and it takes the, you know, chokes the oxygen out of people who are trying to get the incremental project going through. So this is uh, quite a challenge in, in, in quite a lot of areas of software, and it's particularly the case where you've got well-established categories. If it's a totally new category, it's not so much of an issue, right? And I think content management had that advantage for a while, you know, it was a new category. Mm -hmm. But now you're seeing Microsoft SharePoint coming in, and it's like, you know, what is it, 75 million? What are they up to these days in Canada? It's, it's, it's these big, big ELAs, and that is a structural barrier, not just to open source, but to any small company getting in. So um, in terms of the, the uh, open source uh, involvement in foundations in government, uh, Don was talking a little bit about Eclipse and, and the Italian uh, government getting involved in Eclipse and uh, Mikey started to talk about Drupal. Uh, Dave, uh, from the perspective of OSGEO, have, have, uh, has government, have you started to see government uh, involvement in, in what are the types of areas and what are the types of influences and effects uh, in that regard? Um, let me see here. Those two now, uh, I believe there are at least two government entities that are sponsors directly of uh, the foundation. Um, so this certainly is from that perspective uh, in terms of sponsorship. That's a big, big step, you know, because it's sort of a statement at that point. It's one thing to be passive contributors or even active contributors, but silent. Um, but the moment you put your, your logo on the page and put money on the table, um, it's kind of an indicator. I think that's kind of what you saw with that uh, Italian transportation group is saying, you know, we really support what's going on here and, and, uh, and, and philosophically want to be aligned with that. Um, however, you know, one of the neat things about a foundation when it gets set up, um, and I mean, I can only, I really speak from the open source geospatial standpoint, what it did um, was it facilitated uh, many, many critical conversations that needed to happen among these parts of the community, all right? So, so you have, and I mean, this extends beyond government, but you had a lot of businesses, you had a, little, a lot of little businesses doing their own things, you had a lot of individual contributors, you had um, NGOs, you had a lot of, and all these different projects, all sort of one-on-one -on -one conversations happening here and there, and plans and trying to, plan. when the foundation came together, um, I don't know if anybody really knew this was going to happen, but it did. And what it did was it really brought everybody together on a common cause. And, and maybe mapping is quite unique because it's one of those things that's a very niche space, but it applies to almost everything around. Right? And so you get this effect that, um, one of the strange effects I've noticed with this is that um, 
geospatial as an industry, as a proprietary industry, has really struggled with uh, getting out of its own domain. It's one of those industries that's very much, we all talk to each other, and we don't want anybody else to talk to. So, so all these GIS people hang around and talk to each other, who am I going to sell to? Do you want to buy my stuff? Well, I already have my own. You know, so, so, uh, it's not work. <laughs> so, but with open source, see, you put it out there, and then all these people come, and they come from all over the place. And so what happens is we've got this interesting effect, and the foundation has sort of solidified this of community that's reached out beyond the proprietary realms and the proprietary conferences and regions that all the things belong to. So, you know, and government has played a role in that. And so we see, uh, for instance, the Brazilian government actually had code written for their space agency, got contributed right into the foundation, and became sponsors, um, you know, it, it, and so they got engaged. And in fact, there are a lot of problems with the way they were writing code and software. And so then the community got involved in saying, you got to do things differently <laughs> and better. It was very interesting, you know. So, so it's been a, a, a accidental in a funny way, but it's been an interesting model in the end of, of how um, tremendous sort of progress can happen in terms of government engagement with the uh, foundation.